what is contrast sensitivity, why it is so important factor for our vision, and how this parameter is related to cataract treatment, intraocular lenses, and visual outcomes after the surgery. Hi there! My name is Oleksi, and I'm telling the truth about intraocular lenses at IOL Advisor Channel. What is contrast? Contrast is the difference between areas with different brightness levels or different color intensity. In other words, black and white is high contrast, while light gray and dark gray is low contrast. That seems clear, but it's important to note that contrast itself is a physical property. Contrast sensitivity, however, is a completely different matter. It refers to how well a person can detect those low contrast objects. And this relates to both the eye and the visual cortex. Let's break it down in this video. So, contrast sensitivity. First, I'd like to introduce you to what's called spatial vision theory, which describes how the brain and the eye together actually form a visual image. In other words, how we truly see. If you're a doctor, I highly recommend googling the term spatial vision theory and exploring it further. But in this video, I'll briefly explain how it works and why it's such an important factor in visual quality. At its core, spatial vision theory describes the process of image formation using combinations of elementary components with sinusoidal variations in brightness across space. Sounds complicated, but we'll make sense of it. Where do we get this knowledge? Well, it goes back to 1959, when Hubel and Wiesel, well-known scientists, conducted a famous experiment that later earned a Nobel Prize. That experiment revealed something very important. The human visual cortex is made up of specific neural blocks, with each block responsible for processing different components and types of visual information. In other words, certain neural blocks react to specific types of stimuli with unique characteristics. Then, in later stages, other parts of the visual cortex combine all these elementary stimuli, these fragments of raw visual input, into a coherent image that we perceive consciously. Take a look how the scientists use a beam of light to highlight some part of the image and listen carefully. The crackling sound you're hearing? That's the electrical impulse response of the visual cortex to specific stimuli. You may have noticed no response to one stimulus type, and then, when they change it, the neurons respond. In other words, we now know the brain has different types of neural connections that respond to specific stimuli, based on size, orientation, brightness, and spatial relationships. And yes, initially, the brain receives a massive amount of seemingly meaningless data. By the way, if you've ever studied how digital cameras work, the same process happens in the heart of your camera. Let's go back to humans. In digital cameras, we use mathematical methods, like Fourier transforms, to turn that raw sensor data into a meaningful image. The human brain performs something very similar. What is a Fourier transform? In short, it's a mathematical method that allows any image to be represented as a series of linear combinations of sinusoidal grids with different phase, frequency, orientation, and amplitude. Phase is the spacing between waves or grid elements, Frequency is the number of elements per unit of space. Orientation, pretty self-explanatory, is the angle or tilt. Amplitude refers to brightness. If a stripe is faint, it has low amplitude. If it's bright, the wave has a stronger signal. These basic visual elements detected by the retina are called Gabor patches, and they look like this. When our brain receives a lot of these Gabor patches, it applies Fourier transforms, and here's the magic happens. Take a look at this image. Low frequency elements give you one part of the picture. High frequency elements give you another. When you combine the low and high frequency images, the result is a coherent and recognizable human face. Now think, what happens if we lose the high frequency data? Pause for five seconds and really think what will be missing. Pause the video, think about it, post in the comments, and then continue and hear my response. Well, I hope you got the right answer. In that case, you won't see details like a furrowed brow or subtle mouth movements. What does that mean? It means you may not be able to recognize emotions properly. And this is actually one of the early signs of cataracts. Patients report that while they recognize people, they struggle to interpret emotions. Later on, some patients say they can't recognize people at all, even though their vision seems okay. 
That's a well-known example of early contrast sensitivity loss in cataracts. I recently had a patient who showed this classic pattern of reduced contrast sensitivity. The patient had minor initial retinal problems, and the patient was implanted with one of the newest interocular lenses, which literally appeared in Ukraine in 2021. As he described his condition in low light conditions, and in particular during night driving, he said, I can see only what is light with this operated eye. For example, I can see a street light, I can see oncoming headlights, but let's say that under this street light there is a fence and some other details I can't see. And as he said, as long as I drive the car at the expense of an unoperated eye with cataracts, he still somehow sees. This story actually ended well because after my consultation, I suggested that the patient choose a different type of lens. The patient had already undergone surgery and reported to me that in principle his situation had improved and the eye in which he had placed another lens distinguishes details in the shadows. And as he said, for example, I look at the house opposite and I see not only windows, but I see walls. And accordingly, he said, I haven't driven my car yet, but I will. And it's already evident that I probably won't have any problems. This is such a classic picture of how exactly contrast sensitivity and a drop in contrast sensitivity can affect the quality of your vision, the details in some difficult lighting conditions. And by the way, this problem was described back in 1987 by ophthalmologist Arthur Ginsberg in his work in which he analyzed how patients with different degrees of cataracts or with different types of cataracts can drive a car, how dangerous it is, how safe it is, and how it affects the quality of life. Very interesting work and particularly interesting and illustrative is this image here, where he showed exactly what spatial frequency is responsible for what amounts and types of information. As for spatial frequency and this resolution of the eye, it is different for everyone. Our brain and eye have absolutely different structure in each person, and that is why these subjective, let's say, limits of what a person can see in different conditions are absolutely different. This is affected by the state of the retina, the state of the optics of the eyes, and it is affected in principle by the state of the visual cortex, of course, because all of this is the complex that allows us to realize and see the image. And that's why not all visual information can go to the brain, or rather not just to the brain, but to the awareness, to your conscious part, to what you can see and to what your conscious self says, how I see it. Because information can be lost in the optics, in the optic nerve, well, in the retina including and of course in the visual analyzer. In the real world, we each have our own refractive errors, myopia, hyperopia, astigmatism, anatomical lens differences, and various IOL models. In the retina, people have different densities of neural cells, which determines resolution. The more cells, the more visual detail you can perceive. These cells, rods and cones, detect light either in bright or dim conditions. Each is essentially a tiny electrochemical reactor. They undergo chemical reactions that produce electrical impulses. And every person has their own specific parameters here. Chemical reaction speed and efficiency vary. And these differences influence your subjective contrast sensitivity as well. From there, processing continues in the brain's neural network, where differences in connection quantity and quality affect perception. So friends, the concept of contrast sensitivity may not be very important if the patient has good healthy eyes, normal retina and everything is fine. But with age or if there are some retinal problems, it can be very important. That's why, when I talk in my videos about contrast sensitivity, or when I explain about contrast sensitivity in my consultations, most likely in your head, the picture looks like this. Here is a high contrast image, and this image has low contrast. It is worse, but still looks okay. But, in practice, however, it looks a little different. A normal image looks with a lot of detail in the shadows, if we're talking about night. And when you lose contrast sensitivity, the amount of details in the shadows drops dramatically and you just see less details. And the picture is not only became more faded, it is and it becomes less detailed. And the same thing that I said at the beginning of the video about emotions, about this picture of a person wrinkling his forehead. With loss of contrast sensitivity, the patient cannot read the emotions or may not even recognize other people. In general, more than 10 factors influence the change in contrast sensitivity in particular the deterioration of contrast sensitivity. It's contact lenses. And I can say, as a person who wears contact lenses, while the basic monofocal contacts, the quality of the picture with contact lenses and with good glasses is different. 
Yes, it is uncomfortable with glasses. Because of its weight, it presses on the nose. The field of vision is narrowed. But the quality of the picture is better because the glass in spectacles is always better than this hydrogel in a contact lenses. And the material of the intraocular lens, it is better than the contact lens. So the image is better with the IOL than with the contact lens. And multifocal lenses further reduce contrast sensitivity. For example, my mom, she wears multifocal contact lenses now. But at night, when she drives, she takes contact lenses off because she says, I'm not comfortable driving, I can't see well. It's contrast reduction. That's the first factor. Moving forward, the retinal pathologies, I have already talked about it, like changes in the state of rods, cones, neuroepithelium in general. This naturally reduces the quality of vision and affects contrast sensitivity. Laser vision correction, corneal surgeries, they change the profile of the cornea, adding spherical aberrations, higher order aberrations, and all this also reduces contrast sensitivity because the cornea is changing. It is rarely talked about, but laser vision correction, in principle, is not an ideal procedure. It also has its own nuances. Refractive errors of the whole eye, it's myopia, hyperopia, astigmatism. These all also reduce contrast sensitivity, if not corrected. The different IOLs reduce contrast sensitivity based on lens material and optic design. Different IOL models have different amounts of aberrations, either specially induced or not removed, such as spherical aberrations. And this whole picture also affects the quality of vision, the amount of light, and, in fact, the contrast sensitivity that a patient with this or that lens model can get. The size of the pupil also affects the contrast sensitivity and the quality of the image to a very large extent. The pupil narrows when we have a lot of light and widens in dim light and dark. If pupil is large, the lens periphery is more involved, and low quality IOLs has more aberrations at periphery, plus the periphery of the cornea may add some aberrations. And all this affects image contrast. Age is also a key factor for decreased contrast sensitivity, because the retina does not get any younger with age. Other factor is glaucoma, which damages nerve cells, neuroepithelial cells, and of course, various neuropathies of the retina, that is, everything that is associated with damage to the nerve fiber layer of the retina. These are all factors that reduce contrast sensitivity and reduce the quality of vision. And this is why a patient can show good visual acuity in the ophthalmologist's office. C10 lines, because we test vision in good lighting conditions and we test vision of high contrast objects. White background, black letters, and in real life, it's not like that. We have a lot of low contrast objects and Again, the light levels are very different. And this is the reason why your doctor may tell you, you have a good vision and you will be still unhappy. It's contrast sensitivity.